Hello everyone, my name is Olubenga Adekoye from B7 Studio. In these tutorials, I would make you understand the importance of a proper gain structure. The first thing I do before mixing a song is to get a proper input level across my individual tracks. I do this to get the input level of my signals to the sweet spots of my plugin. No matter what plugin I'm gonna be using, they've all got their sweet spots. So, this is a song I recorded titled Ferreira, music by Olubenga. Back when I was still in college, I would like to play this song. It's a raw file without any processing. You see how much input signal on every individual tracks across the multi-track session. <laughs> What I'd like to do first is getting a proper gain structure across my individual tracks. It's either you reduce the input level of every individual tracks through the clip gain or you insert a trim plugin on every individual channel. Okay, let's put this on a test. Let's solo this. I would like to start with my drums because it's the center of the rhythm and I'll build the rest signals around it. So we've got so much level going on here. Now we insert a trim plugin to reduce the input signal level by minus 6 decibels. Minus 8 dB. So now I'm getting a decent level from here and now. Just copy this from here. As you can see, we've got a lot of dynamic range going on in the percussion instrument. And you might notice with the gain structures, we still got a lot of dynamic range happening in music. This happens if we've got a lot of information going on in the low mid frequency range. But we're gonna try to solve a little bit of that, but not trying to take all the dynamic range out of the music. We still need some kind of dynamic range in the music. We've got a lot of information in the low mid frequencies, which are actually overloading our master output. So we're gonna try to solve that with an equalizer.
notice I'm using my trim plugin to get a proper gain stage and on individual multi tracks on this session I'm having different decibel level control because I'm actually watching each individual multi track fader to know if I'm exceeding my minus 18 decibels on each input level so once I notice I'm exceeding on each channel on my input level minus 18 dB I use my gain stage trim plugin to reduce input level down to minus 18 dB so some other instrument here I've got some low input level and using my trim plugin to get them up to that level which is reducing the level of some signals that are hot and increasing the level of some signals that are cold got trim plugin across all my multi tracks like I said earlier I'm actually using my trim plugin to reduce the input level of some signals above minus 18 decibels so I don't overload my master feather and increasing the input level of some signals below minus 18 decibels so I can actually get a full signal on individual tracks across my multi-track session. Let's play back for before and after the trim plugin to know what's happening. And let's keep an eye on the master fader metering to know what's happening. <laughs> As you can see, without the trim plugin, the upper level of the entire session is around negative three decibels. But with the trim plugin, it's much more reduced and we've got drastic difference between the two with the trim plugin and without the trim plugin which leaves us with the trim plugin with a lot of air drum for our mix. 
So now, in the plugin, I initiate on individual tracks would give me a good result because I've gotten the input level to the sweet spot of the plugin. In case you notice, the music is sounding a lot better across the multi-track session. The individual tracks has been given a proper gain structure. You've got to do your gain structures first because it's very important. To get more of this, please subscribe to my page. Make sure you check your gain structure on every individual tracks across your multi-track session. I'll see you again next time.